This time on Atlas Unlimited. We take a scenic carriage ride around Killarney. Hike the trail to Torque Waterfall. It was built in 1963 by beavers. Take in the beauty of the Wild Atlantic Way. I have never seen a more clear, a more complete, or a more colorful rainbow in my entire wow. life. And become shepherds for a day in the Irish countryside. <laughs> Just as the sun rises, we start our adventure off by grabbing a quick snack at Centra. The cold wind is biting at our ears, but with a hot chocolate and some delicious snacks, the beauty is well worth the temporary discomfort. After our stop, we drive just a few miles outside of Killarney to begin the morning's hike in Killarney National Park. The woodlands in Killarney stretch for over 30,000 acres. 3,000 of which formed the largest patch of remaining native Irish trees. It's not uncommon to see ravens, peregrine falcons, or if you're lucky, a red deer, feasting on the vegetation of the forest floor. The steady roar of the icy Owen Gurriff River entices us to venture deeper inside. It's maybe a little too enticing. How slippery is it? <laughs> good traction here, man. Why'd you turn around? <laughs> no. Go ahead and give us a What was it? What was that? You just <laughs> took a little spill. I love that where we are right now, this incredible forest was just right off the beaten path. You know what I mean? As we ventured deeper and deeper, what little sound we could hear of the road shrinks further and further into the distance as another sound starts to get louder. Unreal. Oh, it's so, oh my gosh, it's huge. We finally reached Torque Waterfall. The waterfall gets its name from an old Irish folktale that tells of a man who was cursed by the devil to spend each night as a boar. After his secret was revealed by a local farmer, the cursed man then burst into flames and disappeared into a nearby lake. The same lake from which the waters of Torque Waterfall come. And the name Torque means wild boar in Irish. But Keaton has his own theory about where the waterfall came from. Well, this waterfall, it was built in 1963 by beavers. Bear with me. The beavers had formed a union, classic. They didn't want to dam anymore. So to free up their labor and their time, they built the waterfall. It was actually a big problem because the beavers, they, they had too much time on their hands. So a lot of them got really into gambling and things like that. It, it, it became ugly. Those damn beavers. As we trek back to our car, we notice another strange attraction located just across the street. But what is a jaunting car? <laughs> Okay, we definitely have time for this. <laughs> I don't think there's a more magical way to see Killarney National Park than in the back of a horse-drawn carriage. Self-guided tours are fun, but nothing beats the experience of having a local guide. Let's start with a horse. Yeah. <laughs> how, uh, how many tours do you think you give a day? Uh, we'll see. Well, it's quite dull at the moment. We're all, we don't average maybe two. But yeah. in July, August, when we're very busy, you're talking about four or five. Wow. But I, but I have three horses, yeah. and I change them every two days. Oh, okay. So oh, they nice. get a break. Yep. Wow. Our route sees us traveling down through the woods and onto a path that runs parallel with Killarney's three beautiful lakes. And though we've caught glimpses of them as we drove down the road, we're about to get up close and personal. These lakes are home to thousands of fish, including brown trout and salmon. And although connected, each of the lakes has their own unique ecosystem. 
Despite the impressive view, Keaton still finds the need to get a little bit closer. Once done soaking in the vistas, we continue our trek to the center of the park, where a mansion, known as the Muckross House, waits to be explored. The, the house is here, guys. It was uh, built away back in 1843 by an English landlord, Henry Arthur Herbert. It cost him £30,000 to build the house. That's that all? Then. No way. Yeah, and it took, him, it took him five years to build it. He shipped every stone across the mountain to build it. In 1899, it was bought by Arthur Guinness, who rented it out as a hunting lodge. Basically an Airbnb for the wealthy elite. I'm just, everywhere you look, it's amazing. In 1932, after changing hands a few more times, the mansion and its surrounding 11,000 acre estate were donated to the Republic of Ireland. Upon that gracious donation, this property, along with the forest surrounding it, became Killarney National Park, Ireland's first national park. And just under 50 years later, this area was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A shining example of balance between humans and nature. As our ride draws to a close, our guide tells us about an abbey that's just down the road, and we decide to pay it a visit, which is easier said than done. So we're, we're hiking through the forest right now. There might be a trail, there might not be, we haven't seen it yet, but we're hiking to a place called Muckross Abbey. It should be just over this hill, actually. It's old, it's a ruin, but um, it's got this beautiful tree in the center of it that's growing up out of the courtyard. Though we're dying to see it, we're quickly running out of time before we have to be at our next adventure. Our maps are pointing us up the hill, but it seems like we're lost, going in circles. We decide to try one more route, but unfortunately, we have to turn around and head back to our car. It's heartbreaking leaving such beauty behind in Killarney. With each place we visit, we can't help but feel like we're just skimming the lake's surface. And it's honestly kind of depressing. But from the depths of our slump, Ireland was listening. It's literally across the sky. I have never seen a more clear, a more complete, or a more colorful rainbow in my entire wow, life. It looks like you Look, can totally you can see, see where it touching touches. the ground. Yeah. There's a pot of gold in there. I'm here. I. Oh my. Dude. It's not uncommon to see rainbows in other places in the world, but here they are something else. Uh, look at that side. It was like a personal tap on our shoulder, reminding us to be grateful and enjoy the journey. Guys, I got amazing video of it. Yeah. As we make our way into Dingle, we catch our first glimpse of the wild Atlantic Way, a beautiful stretch of Ireland's coast that backs up to the Atlantic Ocean. And if things go south with the travel filmmaking, it might be home to our backup jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> We've been invited by the locals to join them on a little expedition through the pasture. <laughs> making some friends along the way. Our hike will take us up to some ancient bogs, stopping to feed the local livestock. Yeah, yeah, they they come. Come. <laughs> Normally they wouldn't come near you. <laughs> they already got fed earlier on today. But... Most of the sheep we interact with are friendly, but some prefer to keep their distance. Yeah. On our way up, we pass several mysterious looking Stone stones. Is interesting. Uh, the first farmers put those up. Really? About 5,000 years ago. These stones dot the landscape and are just as mysterious as they are common. What do the standing stones uh, do or represent? Nobody knows. Removing the stones is considered bad luck, and so most farmers tend to keep them where they are. Wow. Tradition and superstition are equally important parts of Irish culture. 
Even the bogs that we're hiking to were traditionally used by ancient farmers, though recent laws passed actually prevent the locals from using these bogs to heat their homes. Conflicts like these are at the core of Ireland's identity. As we near the top, the sheep become more skittish. Those that choose to make the higher roads home are not as used to human interaction. Reaching the bog at the top, we're a little winded, and our shoes are completely damp. Right where I was standing, <laughs> all my shoes are off. Bogs are comprised of dense vegetation that lives, dies, and then buries itself over generations. Most of this vegetation is moss, which holds water like a sponge. Eventually, the vegetation becomes hard bricks that can then be dug from the ground and burned, just as you would with firewood. Hiking with locals, feeding livestock, and experiencing these bogs firsthand was nothing short of incredible, and it really caused us to regret much of what we'd experienced so far. We believed that we could plan an amazing trip ourselves, get to see everything that we wanted. But sharing it with the locals, that's how Ireland ought to be experienced. It was tempting to fall into a slump as we turned and left for the day, but Ireland gently reminded us that the best is yet to come. Next time on Atlas Unlimited. Uh-oh. Looks like you boys just got into a quid cab. Oh! oh I've got the chance oh. to win big. <laughs> Are you serious right now? <laughs> you can hear it if it is. On. Hi, I'm Kelly, and I'll be your guide. Look, there's, not, there's no cliffs. What are they even talking about?